Hi, this is Jim, and in this Bolt tutorial, we're going to create point-and-click player movement in the style of an action RPG like Diablo or a MOBA like League of Legends. I've created a simple package for you to follow along with me. It has Unity's third-person controller and a terrain that is a uh, static nav mesh. Whatever character you use as your player, just make sure that it has a nav mesh agent component on it, like I have here. So let's start by clicking and adding a component, and let's add a flow machine. Click New Macro, and save your new macro as player input. I'm going to add underscore tutorial to my macro title. Uh, this way you know which graphs are mine in your project, and uh, if you download the project package, all completed macros will have the tutorial in the title. So you can just name yours as player input. Delete the starting units and add the unit on button input. And make the name fire1, which is our mouse click. So let's back up for a minute and uh, kind of formulate what we're trying to do as questions. One question is, has the mouse been clicked? And another question is, where is the mouse? So for the first question, has the mouse been clicked, let's create a variable for our answer. And our answer is going to be yes or no, or true or false. Before we go on, let's name our graph here as player input. OK, so make an object variable and call it lClick. And make it of type Boolean. Hold Alt and left click drag and drag it to the graph. Connect it together. And what we want to do is set this variable to true when the mouse is clicked. Drag out the new value input, the little green dot, and select Boolean. When the mouse is clicked, L click will be true. And it will be true forever, uh, but we only want it to be true for a little bit. So drag out the flow and search for timer. Hold Alt and left click drag to bring out another set variable for the left click variable. After a certain amount of time, we want to set this back to false. The flow from the timer that we want is completed. And right now, the duration for the time is one second. And we'll make that a little bit shorter later on. Hold Control and left click drag to group this up and call it left click. So our first question, is the mouse clicked, is answered. Next, where is the mouse? Right click and make an update unit. And from update, we want a branch because we only want the mouse position if we've clicked the mouse. So left click drag to get the left click variable. We only want the flow to branch if left click is true. Next, we only want this click flow to happen once. So add a once unit. Update, you can think of as like a faucet. And we only want one frame of a signal to tell everything to happen. When left click is false, we can reset this once unit so it can be fired again. Drag out the flow and get a physics ray cast unit with a ray, hit info, and a max distance. We're going to send out a ray from the camera and mouse, and it's like a laser that's going to go to the world. Right click and get a camera screen point to ray unit with just the ray. And then drag out the camera and get a camera get main unit. And then for the position of the mouse, type input get mouse position. Let's visualize what this little group here is doing. Add a debug ray unit and run the flow from our raycast to the debug ray. Connect the screen point ray to the raycast. And on the raycast, set the max distance to be 100. Set the duration of the debug to be 5 seconds. For the start of our debug draw ray, drag out the screen point to ray and get origin, 
and then plug that origin in. And then for the direction, find get point and plug that in. And let's put in 60 meters, 60 meters out for how far the ray should go. And I'm going to go up to our mouse clicks and change the duration to 0.1 second. So 0.1 second after we've clicked the mouse, uh, the mouse left click variable will switch back to false. Press play and click around the game view and you'll see what the screen point to ray is doing. Cool. All right, I'll move this out of the way for now and drag out the ray cast and create a branch unit. If the mouse is clicked, we get a ray cast. And when we have a ray cast, let's get the mouse position. So create a scene variable for mouse position and make it a vector three. Hold Alt and drag it out and connect it up. Drag out hit info and find get point. Get point is the impact point in the world where the ray hits a collider. So connect that point up to set it as the mouse position. Next, what is the mouse clicked on? So drag out hit info and get get collider. Then get a collider get game object unit. Let's set this object as our target. So make a scene variable and call it clicked target and make it a game object. Alt and left click drag to set this variable. And let's set this variable with what our ray hits. So connect the flow up. Let's fetch the tag of the game object so we know what kind of object it is. So create a scene variable called target tag and make it of type string. Alt left click drag that in to set it and drag out the get collider and type collider get tag and connect the tag up so that the target tag is the tag of our target. So if we click on a game object that's tagged mouse, the string mouse will be stored in the variable target tag. I'm going to organize things and group this up. So control drag and then I will call it mouse position. Press play and see if the variables are being set. Okay, that works. So go back to mouse position and in between the once unit and the raycast unit, add a unit called sequence. Sequence will send out another flow just a frame later than the first one. So I'll move our debug out of the way so our second flow will go to a branch. The branch will check the tag of our target. So go get the target tag variable. Drag out the target tag and type string equals and connect it to the branch. Check if the tag is floor. I'll select this and control D duplicate it. If you had a target tagged enemy, this is where you could check for that. From the branch, if it is the floor, make an object variable and call it is moving. And is moving will be a boolean. Hold alt and drag it out to set it as true with a boolean if the target that the player has clicked on is the floor. Drag out the flow and search for nav mesh stopping distance and we'll make it zero for now. Group this part as select action and then group this other part up as move. Next, we're going to create two state machines. One will be for the player movement and the character modes. Uh, and the second is going to be for directing the states of the animator. So let's make the first, make a state machine. Click new macro and call it player movement mode control. Let's rename our first state to player idle. Right click and create an any state unit. 
Any state means we can transition from idle to attack or attack to drink orange juice as long as they are all connected to an any state uh, any transition can happen. So right click and make another flow state and call it player move. Make transitions to each state and we're going to start with the transition to move. Right click and make an update unit and then add a branch. Go to the object variables and drag out an is moving variable and connect it to the branch. Click on the player move. On entering the player move state, type nav mesh agent set enabled. I wanted to show you that we can turn this off and on. So when the player is moving, we want it to be on. And when the player stops, we're going to turn it off. On update, make a branch. Go back to the player input graph and let's get the check for the floor tag. Copy that part and go back into the move player state and paste that in. Connect it up. If the target is floor, get a nav mesh set destination. And what target will the agent go to? Go to the scene variables and grab the mouse position. Hold control and left click drag and let's call this group check target. And let's call this other group set destination. Oh, and at the top, the nav mesh agent should be enabled on enter, so toggle that. So press play and check it out. At long last, your player is moving around. Back to the graph, drag out nav mesh set destination and create a branch. Let's check if the player has arrived at the target. So right click and add a distance unit. We want the distance in vector three. And we want the distance from where we are. So type transform get position and then get the nav mesh agent get destination unit because we're getting the distance from where we're at to the nav mesh destination. Run the distance unit into a less or equal than unit, and we want to check and see if the agent is there. So I'll just put it as zero for now. Group this up and call it arrive. And let's set a variable for saying that the player has arrived. This variable is going to direct the transition to the other state and the other state is, is idle. And so this variable will also be a Boolean and then alt and left click drag. So we can set this as true. and group this little part up and call it go to idle. All right, I'm going to tidy things up a little bit and then go into the transition to idle and make an update. Get a branch. Then drag out that is idle variable we just made. If is idle is true, we'll go to the idle state. In idle, we don't really need to do anything, but on exit, set is idle to false. So let's test this. And now you can see that our uh, states are working, but they're both happening at the same time. And that's not right because the player shouldn't be idle and moving at the same time. So go to player move and add an on exit unit. On exit, we want to set is moving to false. And then again, get the nav mesh agent set enabled unit. And we want to set it to false because the player character isn't moving anymore. Press play again, and we can see that now we're switching states. 
Next, let's add the animations. So I'll bring up the animator. And in the animator, you can see I have idle and run animation states. So on the player, add another state machine and click new macro. And I'll call it player animator states. In the animator, I've made a parameter called state that is an integer. Each number directs to a different transition, so 0 goes to idle and 1 goes to run. So this state machine is going to send out the integers to the parameter so that the player character is doing the right animations. The first flow state, rename to, uh, and this gal is a mage, so I'll make it mage idle, and then make an any state unit and create another flow state and call it mage move. Make transitions to each of these flow states again from the any state, and the transitions will be the same as the previous state machine. Starting in the transition to idle, create an update unit and flow it to a branch and that branch should check for is idle. For the transition to move, let's copy the transition to idle and paste it in the move transition, and then change the is idle variable in the dropdown to is moving. In the idle state on enter, drag out the flow and search for animator set integer. The value should be zero, and the name is state. Go to mage move, and on enter, add another animator set integer. The parameter name is state, and this time we want the integer one. One is the value that transitions to the run animation. Press play, and I'll turn off the gizmos for the game view. And there's our animations, awesome. So that's everything for this video. My name is Jim, again, and I'll be bringing you tutorials every week or every other week, so stay tuned. If there's something you'd like to learn, let us know in the comments or join us on Discord. Till next time.